Now let's talk about the controls themselves. You have only two knobs to deal with here. The gain knob controls how much the receiver allows you to hear. So if you turn it way up, you tend to get a lot more clutter around the display. And it's no fun. You want to keep your gain as low as possible at all times. There's another nice feature of the, uh, the gain switch is that it also enables the night mode. So when you're in a low light situation, you press and hold the button and the lights will dim by 50%. Press and hold it again, and it'll return itself to normal brightness. Uh, it's a nice little feature if, at night uh, in a fish house when these lights tend to be a little overpowering at times. Uh, the interference rejection. Uh, the interference rejection has 20 IR settings, which means that you can, every time you turn it on, it starts at number one. All right, starts at number one. And then you just simply press, 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 press until you find a setting where you don't see a lot of interference or static on your screen. You'll also note that if you start using the higher numbers, like 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, the display will slow down a lot because it's trying to phase the display to eliminate interference. If you don't like that, just keep pressing until you find a display that works. Um, the system here has a series of ranges, and this is how it works. Uh, when you turn the system on to the right, you're using the gold wheel, which is 0 to 20 foot. So you turn it on, and it's 0 to 20, and in this case, we're in about, uh, what, six foot of water or so, six and a half foot of water. Um, if I was going to the, and you always want to use the smallest range settings possible because if I went to the 40 foot scale, see all the information now is compressed. If I went to the 60 foot scale, it's compressed even more. So you want to make sure you use the most part of the dial as possible. And you'll also note that when you look at the display, the signal itself, the bottom signal itself, tells you a lot about what's there. In this case, the long tail that you see signifies a soft bottom. Technically, right now, I, I know for a fact that I'm fishing in a weed bed, and this weed bed will give you the impression of a soft, mushy bottom because it acts like a carpet down there and gives you a longer tail. The second signal you see here is called the double echo. Uh, many times you'll see the double echo uh, when you're in deeper water, if on rock or hard sand, but the first line will be very thin. And you'll learn all about that as you fish with it. In this application, obviously, it's turned up too hot. You always want to stay with a gain low. If you start seeing all this clutter, there's something wrong. And that means your gain is not set properly. That means you'll bring it back down to a civilized number uh, where it looks clean and simple. If this is not clean and simple enough, then you'll go to the low power 20. Now see how the signal fades away from bright red to just a little bit of orange or yellow. Uh, as you turn the signal up, it'll turn it to red and you can actually filter out a lot of the weeds and vegetation, but you can actually make the signal a lot sharper as well. So by adjusting your gain in combination with low power, you can do a great job. You will find though that um, to get the low power to function like it would a normal 20, you'll have to turn it way up to the 6 mode. See, now the display looks very similar to normal power 6. This is very susceptible to interference when it's in this high gain setting. So you'll want to keep it as low as possible to eliminate interference and adjust the ranges accordingly. It's that simple to get out and let's start fishing. Let's go over some of the details you need to know about your FLX-12 Gens Pack configuration. Uh, this system comes with a 12 volt, nine amp hour battery here in the back. Um, it's already pre-hooked up, ready to rock and roll. But you will notice that there is a red and black cord coming out and that's your quick charge jack. And uh, if you look in your, uh, your box when you've got your unit, you'll see the charger there. And this is a wall charger. It's uh, when you plug it into the wall, it'll turn green, when you simply plug it in to the quick charge jack, boom, now it'll be functioning and now this will turn to red when it's charging. When it's fully charged, it'll go back to green again. Now sometimes if it's hooked up overnight and it still did not turn to green, you may want to unplug it from the wall socket and plug it in again very quickly and see if that will engage the charger to flip over back to green again because sometimes the charge source isn't enough to kick it over. So give that a little, that's a little inside tip for you if you want to give that a try. But you want to charge your battery after every single use and you want to charge it at least once a month during the off season. Um, if you need access to the battery, you have to take off six screws. You'll want to take off these four in the corner and these two that hold the, the transducer holder in place and it locks in the battery at the same time. You take those six screws off, you can have access to the battery, but technically you'll need to do that when you need to replace the battery. The 12 degree ice deucer transducer comes standard uh, with 
the Vexilar system. Now, the Vexilar invented the ice deucer transducer because it's a self-leveling transducer, which means when you're hanging it down in the hole, it'll want to hang straight down. And you will find that that is ultra critical to make sure that you can see your bait at all times. A lot of people say, I can see the bottom, but I can't see my bait. And that's oftentimes because the transducer might be bending in the hole and pointing off in the wrong direction. So you want to make sure that your transducer is always hanging straight, which is one of the reasons I like using the float, because the float guarantees that the transducer will be dropped down pretty much in the middle of the hole. Uh, sometimes and when the ice gets thick, uh, the hole could be bent or crooked and uh, it might not shoot straight down. So the float makes it really nice. Now when you turn your system on, you'll see a light at the zero mark and then, uh, then again we're waiting for a light here to show up at the bottom. Now whenever that does show up. But now I'm going to put the transducer into the hole and let's see what happens. All right and boom. Now we get a bottom reading here of about seven feet, okay? And then there's some noisy stuff up here at the surface. And people say, well, what's that that, that is? Well, that's called surface clutter. And that's caused by the ice uh, ringing around the transducer. So when this happens, all you simply have to do is to drop the transducer further down the hole and the, and the surface clutter will disappear. Also know that as you drop the transducer down the hole, it will get shallower at the same time, see? So when people say, well, how deep is the water? You may say it's 10 foot, but if you have your transducer two foot down the hole, it's actually a lot deeper because you're actually shallowing it up by um, keeping it up high or keeping it down low in the hole. See how it goes up and down? That's very cool. Let's talk about how to set up your FLX-12 in a real live ice fishing scenario. Now what you want to do first off is make sure that all your connections are intact and nice and tight. You don't want any loose connections because a loose connection could mean that you, get, you don't give a good signal. The next thing we want to do is wet the transducer in the water. You want to plop it in the water a little bit and then rub the face of it, either on your pant leg or on your hand, just like this. And this allows the water to bond with the face of the transducer. It's called coupling. It's a fancy word, but it just gives you a stronger, better signal. Then what you do, in this case, I just put the, uh, the transducer uh, you know, about two or three foot down below the, uh, the float because the ice here is about three foot thick and I want the transducer to hang down below the bottom of the ice for a nice straight signal. That's very important. Then what you do is you have your gain set down to zero and then you turn your system to the yellow or gold 20 foot range first. Now we're in deeper than 20 foot of water but you always do this because it now turns on or activates the DD100. And the DD100 then will show you that we're in 29.4 feet of water. So now you know how deep to set your different ranges. So now we'll go from 20 to 40 and boom, there's bottom. So you'll see bottom, you'll always have a line at zero and you'll have a line again at the depth that you happen to be in. And they'll usually both be red. And if they're not red, it's usually the bottom might be green. It could be a real soft bottom. And you may want to turn up the gain a little bit, but you want to get a good, uh, strong red signal. Then the next thing we want to do is start fishing. It's just that easy. Now, in this case, I'm just using a small spoon with a minnow head on it. And we're up here on Lake of the Woods in Northern Minnesota, not far from the Canadian border fishing for walleyes and saugers and a lot of different critters that are down here. But as my lure starts to go down, the spoon will flutter and you'll actually see the spoon going down. That's one of the big advantages of the FLX-12. It has great resolution to be able to see your lure as it's going down in the entire water column. It's, it's an amazing technology developed by Vexlar. And this green line down here, huh, folks, that's a fish. Oh, there's a fish right there. See, one of the advantages to fishing with this type of technology is that you can fish the entire water. See how that fish darted away? The red signal below my lure was a fish. And he just came up. He went, looked at it again. Oh, there he is. Got him. You saw him on the screen. And look at this. It's a giant walleye. Now, obviously, that's the size that counts. And it's more of the lesson that this fish that most people say are on the bottom and this fish was over 10 foot off the bottom. That's the advantage of using a Vexilar. Now you see, I'm not using any kind of bobber and, and that's a, lot, a hard thing for people to understand. I'm using a, like a mini summertime fishing rig here. It's just a short little rod about two foot long with a spinning reel, four pound test line, but there's no bobbers. There's no reason to have a bobber. There's my spoon going down again. Remember, it's like a video game. If I see another signal down there, 
I assume it's a fish of some sort. Could be a walleye, could be anything. You don't know. You're on Lake of the Woods. You could catch anything here. Oh, there's a fish way up here. I, I'm going to zip up here and see if that fish bites. Now, right now, I'm only 20 foot down in 30 foot of water, and that could be a good fish. Don't know what that is. The signals, when they are weak, are green. As they get orange, they're stronger, and the strongest signals are red signals. And that fish is a really nice red signal. So he's directly below me now. That's your indication of knowing, see, that fish was directly below me. If he was green or yellow, he wouldn't be directly below me, but he's sitting there looking at me. It's not biting at all. It's not reacting to me at all. And if that's the case, I'll ignore that fish. Yes, I will ignore that fish and go down to the bottom. Because see, the bottom is moving. And when the bottom moves like that, that tells me that there's fish near the bottom. And, and I might catch a big one sitting right here near the bottom. So what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom and jiggle the bait near the bottom. I like to jiggle it a lot. You can see as I twitch the bait, the bait moves. But when you see the bottom moving like that, like it's alive, the bottom is usually pretty stationary. But if it starts moving, that means that there's a fish down right near the bottom or slightly off to the side. You jiggle your bait hard. You jiggle your bait hard. You pull it up to see if he chases it. Nothing chases it, you drop it back down again. In this case, I'll go right down to the bottom and see if I can pound them in off the bottom. I'll drop it down, shake it a few times. With a Vexilar, you quickly learn that the fish are not always right next to the bottom. They could be almost anywhere in the water column. And your FLX-28 gives you that great target resolution to be able to see that small little jig. Oh, there's something coming up. There's something coming up. It's a green line. Now it's turned red. So he's directly below me. Oh, there's another fish up here. There's another fish up here, and these fish are coming up. See how he's chasing my bait? See how he's chasing my bait? Got him. Got him. Oh, he got off. See how he swam back down? That's so cool. You can actually see the fish react to the bait, miss it, and then react to it again. But this gives you, I guess in summary, all you simply have to do is remember. Adjust your gain accordingly. Now, if I turn my gain way up like this, it's no good. You can't see nothing, nothing but interference, nothing but noise. <laughs> Nobody can fish like that. You turn it down until you get your lure as a nice fine green signal so that when a fish comes in, it'll come in as green, then orange, then red when it's directly below you. You adjust your range setting until you do see the, the red bottom on the display and you can use your DD100, which is back here, to give you an exact idea of what the depth is that you're fishing. But fishing with the FLX-12 is just that easy, and boy, is it a lot of fun. Well, I'm going to keep fishing, and you guys can keep dreaming about how to catch them with your FLX-12 from Vexilar.